Minecraft viewers, this is Chaitali again, your host for Minecraft, and I am back today with another awesome episode. My guest today, I met her, or rather I met, I found her blog in a very interesting way. I was searching around online for ideas on how do you make a card that a lot of people can sign at once. And then I stumbled on her blog. And then I spent a few hours just looking around her blog and not doing my card at all. She has loads of things, loads of awesome talent on her blog, and she is also the founder of Stamp Nation. Have you guessed who she is yet? Well, let's go ahead and meet her. Hi, Catherine. Hey, everybody. I'm so excited to be here today. We are I so excited to have you as well. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining in for this episode. I really was wanted to have like an episode with you, and I think there are lots and lots of questions to ask you. Thank you. I'm excited. And I really love hearing your story about how you found me. That is so funny. <laughs> Not funny, but it's fun to hear. I, I really do love hearing how people find, find me. And that particular project that I did, uh, mm -hmm. I think it was, it may have been three and a half years ago now. Mm -hmm. So early on in my video career, mm -hmm. and, and it's my most watched video. It nice. it may be up to 200,000 views now, but wow. it was one that I made for my husband and my mom. And it was like, and I never, it's like a moving card. And I never yeah. create that kind of thing on my own. I always just copy what everybody else is doing. Because <laughs> I'm not like engineerish that way. Um, and I just sat down one day and created this accordion fold card mm -hmm. and it was a giant hit. It's a fun fun little card. So it It's absolutely awesome. It's like uh, I wanted something where you know uh, usually if a lot of people are signing in they'll mess up the inside of the card by writing like all the messages in there or they'll just write on the front of the card somewhere and that's even worse. So I'm like yeah. how can I you know get space for people where everybody can sign it and still you know like close up the message so that it doesn't spoil the front or the inside of the card. Keep my card the way it should be. <laughs> oh, fun. Yeah, and that card gave space for each of my kids and myself to write in there. So, yeah, it's fun. Perfect. Fun Thank you for sharing that project, and they're good I yeah. met you with that project. <laughs> yeah, that's so neat. Cool. All right, so uh, let's get started on talking a little bit more about your paper crafting journey. Uh, I think we already started off with uh, probably one of your first early videos, but tell us more about how did you get started on this and uh, you know, uh, how did your style change over the years? Sure, I could probably talk about this for a long time, so um, <laughs> cut me off if you need to. <laughs> I started paper, well, I guess my very first diving into paper crafts was um, really in high school. I had a, a little scrapbook that I put together my senior year, and then I didn't really do much else until my first wedding anniversary, and I put together a scrapbook for that, and it's hilarious to look at now because it has all these giant neon cut out triangles with like the pinking shears and neon in your wedding scrapbook that's awesome <laughs> it wasn't um, just the wedding it was like our first um, year of marriage so mm -hmm. it was all the neon and it's such a crack up to look at now and mm -hmm. but you know it holds the memories it's neat to look at and then I didn't scrapbook again until my first daughter was born and then that's when I really dove into scrapbooking hard mm -hmm. and she is 14 and a half now. So she was about, she was probably four when I started making cards. Mm -hmm. And I've been crafty since I was little. My mom is a big seamstress. So mm -hmm. I dabbled in all kinds of crafts. But once I hit card making, like I almost do nothing else now. So <laughs> I just love making cards. And like a lot of people, I found out about it at a Stampin' Up! workshop. And I needed lots of supplies because I wanted to, you know, get started. And, you know, being a stay-at-home mom. like everything. <laughs> yes, I was a stay-at-home mom, so I knew in order to do that, I needed to become a demonstrator. And then, of mm -hmm. course, my idea was I'd just do a couple parties, make my money back, get some free supplies, and be done. And um, it kind of caught fire a little bit. And so <laughs> I, uh, I've been doing that. Where yeah. now? <laughs> 
Awesome. So uh, you did mention you started scrapbooking when your daughter was born. So how was it? Uh, it was probably hectic, right, with the uh, baby and being a mom and also uh, having to document memories. And uh, I hear this a lot from a lot of people that uh, you just get overwhelmed with, oh, my God, this is this so much scrapbooking to be done. But you had excellent solutions for that in your ebook. Tell us more about uh, how you manage scrapbooking. Sure. Actually, I think the first few years when I was scrapbooking, it also served it served as a creative outlet for me, and it was also time to myself. So I would either scrapbook on the dining room table or I'd go to crops. Mm -hmm. And I was very set on being caught up. Have you ever heard of that before? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I'm totally familiar with that. Up. I yeah. can tell you that it's not just a thing for moms. It's also, um, you know, whenever you start scrapbooking, there are so many more memories always. I've felt that myself too. Yeah, so really there is no such thing as being caught up because you never can be caught up because life goes on all the time. So how can you scrapbook life as it happens? You can't. And you can't, you know, scrapbook every day of your life. So it actually started to become a burden for me. And it wasn't fun anymore. So, you know, our best ideas come to us in the shower a lot of times. And that's when it hit me about now how I scrapbook. I stopped documenting everything. I stopped doing event-based scrapbooking, holiday-based scrapbooking. I went more into diving into what makes my family tick. What are the personalities of my daughters? And how does, how does that relate to things that happen in our life? Because when you look back at at your life, you're not going to really care as much who was in attendance at every Thanksgiving dinner. You're going to care more about your traditions and how they started and that, you know, your grandmother used to do X, Y, Z and that's why we do this now. So I do more memory-based um, tradition and personality-based scrapbooking. Mm -hmm. So when I started scrapbooking this way, I decided I want to write a book about it. And so that's what I did and the book I think I have over 80 scrapbook pages in there, but on yeah. every one I tell you what my thought process was behind it and how I got inspired and I tried to inspire my readers to scrapbook something similar. And to be honest with you, I put the book out two years ago and I haven't done a lot of scrapbooking since, <laughs> but I feel okay about it because even if I never scrapbooked a day in my life again, I have the most priceless treasure to pass on to my kids because those books that I made tell mm -hmm. about what's really important, our traditions, our personalities, what me what matters to us. So very beautiful. That's that's really good advice. I think uh, uh, it will help a lot of people that you know not to get overwhelmed with scrapbooking. And mm -hmm. you're right that event based ones definitely it's like you have the same things over and over and. Sometimes it's just too much that, oh my god, I didn't get that one photo of everyone sitting at the table. Now how do I complete my scrapbook? And it yes. can get really and, uh, done. And I address in the, in the book also, uh, mm -hmm. and I really thought about this when my grandmother passed away. Mm -hmm. Do I want to sit and look through 20 scrapbook albums of hers? Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> but we're so busy these days, you probably don't want 20. But if you had even 10 pages, how priceless would that be? Even if you yeah. only ever did 10 pages, that they were meaningful. You know, I had a box of pictures of my grandma, and there was nothing on any of them. I knew nothing. But if even, even if 10 of those pictures had a story, it would have been so priceless. So I just encourage everyone to, you know, at least get a little bit out. It doesn't have to be everything. It doesn't have to be every Easter egg hunt that your kids ever did. <laughs> you know, that, yeah. when they're, you know, 50, what do they want to know about their childhood? And Absolutely. you, you, yeah. you, you're a very important part of that. Yeah. So that that brings me to uh, another question that I, you know, always wanted to ask a seasoned scrapbooker, uh, which is, uh, you know, photos can only capture your moment and you know the setting and everything but certainly not what you're feeling what you're thinking so that's where I think journaling comes in so what's your tip in regard to journaling what do you think you know how do you think people should go about it and I also feel like sometimes when you don't have a photo for that perfect moment you can still capture it in your journaling 
Absolutely. Uh, I'm very passionate about journaling. I see scrapbook pages very often that have almost no journaling on them at all. And I want to know the story. So what I like to do is when I sit down to write a story or to journal, I envision myself talking to somebody. What story would I be telling them? Another mm -hmm. thing is as you go out your daily life, think about you know maybe for the next two weeks what are the stories that you're telling people like when you see your friends like what are you telling them oh last week my kid did blah 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 write that down and even if you don't have photos to go with it you'll be able to pull something I mean I have scrapbook pages that have pictures of me as a child and my kids as a child as children well they're wow. still children so that's the only pictures I have right now but <laughs> so <laughs> The journaling is so important, and if you have to do it on the computer, that's fine. Mm -hmm. but I also hear people all the time say they don't like their handwriting, and again, think about when your kids are 50. They want to yeah. see what your handwriting looks like. I mean, to yeah. have a piece of your grandmother's handwriting, it's so priceless. Yeah, that's that's a beautiful thought actually that you're passing on a legacy in, in your scrapbooks and uh, the way you would have really liked to see some things from you know your parents or grandparents maybe you want to do the same things now for your kids. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Great, great thoughts. So let's come back a little bit to your card making style. You said that's what you enjoy doing uh, the most now and uh, ever since you started making cards you've got way more into that. So how has your style changed over the years? Well it's funny because after I was talking to you I went back and looked at my blog. <laughs> back a couple of years on there, yeah you're going to see something a little different. <laughs> yes. and, um, it is very funny how my style has changed I don't know if I can pinpoint. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I notice my photography has changed, and I'm still working on that every day. It's that that's, is, that's an ongoing thing. Yeah. Oh, it, it's oh yeah, that's a struggle. But um, I think because you know, probably the first five years that I was making cards, I was creating classes for people all the time to come to my house and mm -hmm. make cards with me. So. It's very different, that kind of stamping, than what I do now. Now I get to sit down in front of the video camera and pretty much make whatever I feel like making. So I feel like I um, do more experimenting, I do more techniques, and I do things that I am excited about. Um, I feel like I have a, a, not a real clean and simple style, but something more medium. Not clean and simple, but not like super piled on either. Although I do hit all kinds of styles. Like if you look at my blog, you'll see I do go clean yeah. and simple and I do go piled on. But I like to stay in the middle of the road. Kind of more of a simple card with a pop, I guess. Is it is it also a difference of audience maybe that earlier you're probably catering to beginner crafters and with your videos you're able to reach out to, you know, crafters of all levels. Uh, and possibly show different, more complex styles that you couldn't show to your previous audience? Absolutely. I was um, working with a lot of new stampers all the time, so mm -hmm. you know I can't pull in my stencils and gel medium and embossing paste and heat tool and all this. You have to st stamp paper ink with new, <laughs> new stampers, so it's a little limited. You could do fabulous, mm -hmm. wonderful things with stamp paper ink, but you know, there's a lot of things to think of. But, oh, I have two projects, and I need them to be different, and different color palettes, and you know, not too involved. And so there's a lot. There's a lot in, in that. There was also probably the time element. I could see, you know, the progression yeah. on your blog. And now uh, uh, we should probably tell viewers where this conversation came from. I was telling Catherine that I was looking through a blog to get inspiration for the card that we have today and to get a sense of her style. And uh, it ended up with, oh my God, she has such a different style now. And I loved all of the cards you made right from the beginning to the end. But I could see that, you know, it things were changing along the way so that's where it came from and it was really awesome to actually see a crafter you know grow and uh, you know refine their style more. Interesting yeah um, what would you say my style is? <laughs> uh, 
So I always try to think of a word or two when uh, you know I'm I'm crafting and making a card for my guests, like with my guests. Uh, and the word, the first word that came to my mind with yours was refined. Actually, it's every of your cards is like very well styled, and uh, you can see that there's a lot of effort behind it. It looks simple, but it's not. So that is one big word I came with, and the other one was actually colorful. I think you have all these pops of colors, and when I show you my card for today, I'll show you. I try to get that effect. You have like you may not have the whole card in color, but there's always this awesome pop of color, and I like that. In today's card that I have for you, definitely uh -huh. it's that bill. <laughs> <laughs> nice, very cool. I'm excited to see it. Yeah. Cool. Let's let's go on with uh, talking about Stamp Nation. That is what I mentioned right at the beginning of the interview. Uh, tell us more about it. Oh, I could talk for hours about Stamp Nation as well. Um, <laughs> it is a wonderful place, and I I get very passionate when I talk about it. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable to me what it's grown to. It opened January 11th of 2011, and it opened with two videos. I had two videos on there. Oh, really? And, That's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, and there are members that signed up the very first day that are still with us, which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And it has grown beyond my wildest imagination. I, now we have over 400 videos that are exclusive. You won't find them anywhere else. We have um, a couple other teachers. We have some gals that do written tutorials, and we have some that do video tutorials on there as well. Because when it started, I was the only teacher. So now we have several teachers. I have a whole design team, which the membership started calling them the dream team. So that's what we, we call them. Actually, the members have kind of created their own language a little bit, and it, it's just been so fun to see. <laughs> nice. It's very cool. So it's uh, it's... What is it? It is a place for crafters to get together and learn more and look at videos and kind of also talk to each other too? Absolutely. It's it's definitely a video um, library, I guess, for lack of a better word. It, you know, like I said, the 400 videos, they're all categorized by, you know, what type. Are they card making, plain and simple, scrapbooking, whatever. They're categorized, so they're easy to find. And then there's a section that's called the classroom, and those are written tutorials. There's a gallery that anyone can post their projects in. And yeah, there's lots of chit chat. So there's a forum. And the whole site is forum based. And it's been amazing and so heartwarming to see friendships and relationships form on the site. We have lots of members that are kind of lurkers, and that's mm -hmm. lovely as well, because not everybody, you know, has time to or wants to jump in and chit chat but it's there if you want it. We have um, live chats, too. We actually have members in 20 countries. Wow, that's, yeah. that's really far and wide. Yes. And I want to put in a little plug for you know, the membership uh, uh, part of it. Uh, I think it really keeps up the quality of a community online if you have membership and uh, you will always meet others who are as passionate as you uh, it, to be members. So I think that's a really fabulous model to follow and you, people I... definitely go and check out Stamp Nation and if you want to be part of a great community, that's a good one to be. Yes. Thank you. It is one, one thing that the gals will talk about once in a while is they can't believe how wonderful everyone else on the site is. And I think there is part of that. Like, you have a little bit of skin in the game. You have to pay exactly. to be here. Um, it's advertising free. The entire site is for education and community. And so there's no advertising on there. So, you know, to keep up everything, there has to be a fee because it's expensive to run stuff like that. But anyway, but yeah, we do find, I think it's, you know, once you pay, it's you have ownership over it, and it's something you really want to be a part of. So everybody is friendly and loving and warm and supportive and just amazing. It's, it's a wonderful, happy place. 
Yes, absolutely. That's I think that's awesome. I, I definitely do think that, you know, uh, having a fee makes the content more important to people. And like you said, everyone has a skin in the game. So it's an awesome place to be. And I, I have heard of this so much from so many people. I wish I had the time to check it out and join it. But uh, I would really, really encourage everyone to go ahead and check it out as well. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. So, yeah. um, I say I am a brand new crafter, and this is a big question relevant, you know, most for you. I really wanted to ask you, but was because you have been a teacher uh, for crafting ever since, you know, you started off like you told us. Um, say I'm a brand new crafter, and I have no craft supplies at all, but I just got fifty dollars for my birthday. I want to spend it, and I want to go shopping with you for craft supplies. What would you advise me to buy, and what would you advise me to get started on? Awesome. Maybe you yeah. want to get addicted to the hobby. Okay, well, stamps, paper, and ink. <laughs> <laughs> okay, which ones? 50 bucks is going to go fast, especially if you don't have a paper cutter, because paper cutter is going to be uh, 20 25 $30. Right. And you definitely need that. Unless you get note cards that are pre-scored and folded, hey, that yeah. would be an idea. So you can get pre-cut pre and scored note cards. And then a versatile stamp set. So something that has a few greetings in it, something that has a couple fun images, maybe um, some basic flowers. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's a really great way to start, basic, basic flowers, and then a few ink pads. And you want to think about what kind of colors that you like. Um, is it surprising to you that my favorite are like rainbow, like true Crayola <laughs> colors? No, um, it's not a surprise. <laughs> I would give a good versatile uh, kit as well, right? If you have all the rainbow colors, then you yes. are probably good for, for a while. Yeah, so if you had either a black or brown ink pad for your greetings, and then a good little sampling, you know, I would say four or five ink pads. If you have flowers, make sure you have green, and then you're going to need, you know, a couple colors for the flowers, but I think um, and maybe a little bit of stickles or glitter. Yeah, everyone needs glitter. So yes. cut out on the, uh, don't go for the embossing stuff initially, that's not going to fit in 50 bucks, and probably even on the stamps, solid ones, and not like the, uh, not like ones you need to color in, because colors are expensive. <laughs> right. If you do go that route, um, you can get like little blender pens or aqua painters so you can, uh, you know, your your ink pads will do double duty then. You can get ink from, from your ink pad and color with it. But yeah, new stampers I definitely would suggest keeping with the bold images and not the outline stamps. Yeah. Great. Sounds great. Uh, looks like I will have a kit ready if I want to spend my 50 bucks on. Too bad I already have a big craft room. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And I think that's more than enough to get you addicted. And then be ready to spend 50 bucks every month or so. <laughs> oh, or every other week. Or every or... other week. Or yeah. you know, depends on how much you get addicted to it. <laughs> right. <laughs> So, tell us what you do when you're not crafting. I have three girls, so they keep me very busy. They're 9, 11, and 14. So, my oldest daughter just brought home her driver's ed paperwork. So, I think we're going to be going a little crazy in the house soon because we're going to be moving into a new element of a driver. Um, we got a ways to go, but still, we're, you know, our eyes are big going, oh boy. <laughs> and so, they have all their activities. So, when they're home, you know, I'm carting them around. Um, and um, I always like to try to stay in some kind of physical activity, but I'm one of those kind of girls that I don't live for it. It's not what I wake up, you know, dying to do. So I need some kind of motivation. And the motivation that I'm getting right now is perfect. My oldest daughter used to do year on swimming, and she isn't anymore, so she wants to stay active. And so we've started going to the gym together. So that's been a fabulous mother-daughter bonding time. And she's keeping me in shape, <laughs> or nice. trying to keep me in shape. <laughs> and it looks like they're all three of them old enough then to craft. Do you have crafty time with them together? You know, it's funny because sometimes I feel a little guilty that I don't craft with them as much. But isn't there a saying about the cobbler's kids don't have shoes? Mm -hmm. um, I do craft with them some. My mom sews with them, so they have that. And then they've done, my oldest likes to do mixed media art. 
Oh, wow. My little one, um, she plays with paper some, and then my youngest, she makes cards. She will watch a video of mine and then go to the stamp table and get busy. She cracks me up, and she occasionally gets in some of my videos, so she's oh, a lot wow. of fun. Nice. Well, all nice. fun, but Eva likes to get in the videos. So they, they, they totally uh, get into the craft room and then uh, have their own crafty time with your supplies? They do sometimes. It makes my blood pressure rise a little bit. <laughs> it's not that big, and it's my workspace. So I, I struggle with that a little bit. But, yeah, sometimes mm -hmm. they come in here and make a mess. <laughs> I think you mentioned in uh, in this uh, the collaboration that you did with Christina. You were talking about one where your daughter found, I think, that piece that Christina sent you. It was really hilarious. <laughs> I about fell on the floor. I'm in the bedroom getting ready for bed. Usually, you know, they go upstairs before we do, but this night she was still down in the craft room doing something. Uh -huh. She got, you know, glitter and rhinestones and rainbow colors all over the place. And she comes running upstairs and she's like, hey, mom, I found this. Can I use it on my project? Right away I do. She had the piece of paper, <laughs> the art, art that Christina sent to me, and I was across that room so fast. I was like, oh. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> so while we're talking about your hilarious crafty moments, do you want to also tell us about the time when you had the distress paint flying over? Yeah. Um, I've been getting... <laughs> I've been playing with a lot of new mediums lately. Um, yeah, I did an intense pencil video the other day. I am not an intense pencil expert by any stretch of the imagination. And it's I love seeing all the comments because some people who have a lot of experience have been telling me how to use them. So I'm going to be going back to the craft table to practice that more. But uh -huh. so I was huge to distress paint and I didn't know how to use it. So I was, you know, shaking the bottle and I was squeezing it. And all of a sudden I just squeezed so hard the top popped off and just sprayed everywhere. And it was all <laughs> in my hair, all over the front. And so, you know, I don't always edit that stuff out of what I do. So. It, it's in that's in one of my videos. The pain yeah. all over me. <laughs> <laughs> You're a real sport showing that as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when I was sitting there and it was all over me, I I just sat there kind of stunned for a second, and then I looked up and I noticed that my camera was on the tripod, staring straight at me, and I said, "These ladies are gonna get the biggest kick out of it." <laughs> okay, and so I took a picture. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> is there a movie you have not yet put on any of the videos? Is there one that happened and uh, did not make it make the cut? Um, when it's fun and I can make it funny, I share it. But I have <laughs> lots of stupid boo-boos all the time. Like um, if I am actually in the video, mm -hmm. I will have to film that 5, 10, 20 times before I get it the way I like it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, a lot of that gets edited out. And occasionally if you go to the end of my videos, you'll find some outtakes. I was doing a video once where we had foster dogs and one of my daughters picked up the foster dog and put his paws in the screen. And uh -huh. so that that's at the end of one of my videos. That was hilarious. <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah. really funny though. You have some really nice footage at the end. Yeah, I've seen in some of the videos. Never a dull moment over here. <laughs> nice. All right, so this interview is incomplete without the rapid fire round. And it is time to ask you questions super fast. And okay. you can answer super fast. You want to get a drink of water before that? Sure. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, let's go. Um, favorite Halloween costume? genie outfit and it wasn't mine although I wanted one that my mom sews all the Halloween costumes so that was a good question oh wow custom made Halloween costumes nice oh, yeah. so oldest. whose outfit was it if it wasn't yours what's that oh that it was my oldest daughter and then mm -hmm. it's been passed down and I told my mom the the girls get these beautiful Halloween costumes all the time how come I haven't gotten one since I was 10 I want the genie costume <laughs> did you get it no you have to show my mom the video. She's gonna have to see this. Yes, absolutely. And um, I will tell her right now. Please give Katrina a costume. We want to see her in costume on a video with a card. <laughs> oh yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. Cool. You're promising. You're signing up for that. Thanks. 
Okay, uh, related to costumes, favorite superhero? Wonder Woman. Yes, totally. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, describe your style in three words. Simple. Mm -hmm. Pow. Uh -huh. And fun. Yeah, oh wow, those are totally the three words I would use to describe them. Awesome. Pow. <laughs> <laughs> Pow is also a word. I totally know it's a word. <laughs> okay. Would you rather hike or bike? Hike. Okay. Travel by plane or travel by boat? Plane. Okay. Eat ice cream all day or eat chocolate all day? Chocolate. Nice. Watch Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Wars. Ooh, nice. All right, and these are the questions I got from this uh, one app on my phone called Would You Rather. It's a fun game. I don't know if you've played it before. Uh-huh. Okay. All right, so this is the time to pose for the camera. Give us three poses. Okay. One. Okay. Two. And one more. Okay. Yay, three. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, so now since this is Iron Craft, it was my time to get crafty with you. And it was so much fun to go look through all of your previous cards and find out, you know, what your style is and then craft in your style. So we both created using the same ingredients. And what we used today was this fun stamp set from Casual Fridays. Thank you, Michelle, for sponsoring our episode today. This yes. set is uh, one of the newer sets that Casual Friday has. It's called Casual Comfort. And it was really fun to craft with this. It had like uh, these elements were the solid elements. And the sentiments are actually really nice. They're very calm and peaceful kind of sentiments. And they help make, you know, a really nice card. So do you have your card ready? I do. All right. Three, two, one. Go for it. Wow, we both have colorful cards. <laughs> yes, we do, with the black. Yes. So is that white embossing? Yes, it is. Um, I saw this so this gradient I thought was awesome in a lot of your cards. And yeah. I totally wanted to capture this effect. And if you can see, like, I also put in these dots, which are from, like, sprinkling yes. water on the Distress Ink. I yes. love that effect. I never did that before, which is so oh. surprising. Sponging and splattering is like my favorite thing to do right now. So yeah, yeah you nailed it. And that, that's funny. We did the white embossing on the black. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. I thought these yeah. sentiments like were perfect to put like on on a strip and you know just yeah. put a little bit of strip on it. So that's. Can I tell you a funny thing about the sentiment that uh -huh. um, the amber sand? Uh -huh. I was putting my stamp and the amber sand flicked off and now it's behind my desk and my oh, desk no. is heavy to move. So the amber sand is gone forever. Oh. Like <laughs> well, <laughs> sacrifice an amber sand for the card. <laughs> I know. But tell us about your card. Show me your card again. Okay, so I did watercoloring, and I have a video for this. It'll be up on my blog if you want to link to it. So I'll show you exactly how I did this card. I did clear emboss resist watercoloring with wow. the rainbow colors. <laughs> I actually have um, another card that I made too. I'll give you a really quick sneak peek at it. Ready? Mm -hmm. That's it. Because I'm going to have that on my blog. I'll have it on a PDF download so that um, anybody who wants to download it can get can get this as a PDF. So Nice. Well, that. Awesome. You're on a watercoloring kick. <laughs> I am on a big watercoloring kick. I love it. Yes. So much fun. It is, it is definitely, and I really, it was so surprising that I didn't know that if you like put little drops of water on Distress Inks and then, you know, just let it dry out, it's going to make really nice puddles all over. That was a fantastic tip. It's beautiful, and it's so much fun to play with, and you're going to get different results every time. Yeah, totally. That's mm -hmm. true. All right, so we have two really fabulous giveaways today for Ironcraft viewers. The first one is from Catherine. Catherine, do you want to tell about the giveaway? Sure. I am going to hook 
two of your viewers up with a one month membership to Stamp Nation so they can come and check us out. Awesome. Woo -hoo. All right. And the second giveaway is from Casual Fridays. Thank you again, Michelle, for sponsoring this giveaway. One lucky winner is going to get a $20 gift certificate to Casual Fridays. And you can definitely use it to get awesome stamp sets like that. So, what do you need to do? You need to go to the IronCraft post and just answer this question that Catherine is going to ask us in the comments, and then we will pick lucky winners out of that for the prizes. So, Catherine, what's the question? My question is, what, besides time and money, because I can't help you with time, I can't give you more, and I can't give you more money. So, besides that, what is your biggest obstacle to paper crafting? Very cool. Great question. Besides time and money, what is your biggest obstacle to paper crafting? Tell us what it is, put it in the comments, and Catherine and I look forward to reading what your obstacles are. Thank you everyone for joining us today for Iron Craft, and thank you so much Catherine for doing the video and the interview today with us. Thank you so much for having me. This was so much fun. Yes, it was. Thank you. <laughs> All right. See you everyone. Bye.